Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Nadi Digital Economy Malaysia. Karamjit Singh is my name and my colleague Zof Asmi is with me. Uh, we have four stories for you today and I'm hopeful it will not take the normal 19, 20, 21 minutes we always take. Uh, so this first story now is a long-standing story uh, we have been talking about. And I know uh, some people who who watch the show regularly say they specifically like our, our frank opinions and thoughts on this story, which is on the 5G story, because there's the big names involved and they say sometimes they feel you know, people hold back. And on video, we're the only ones who regularly uh, talk about this. Off. So I don't know whether that's good or bad. or I know. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, for, for Kopitiam or Tetare Talk, uh, this is like, I mean, I've discussed this with several people actually. Yeah, and, correct. Many. Um, but, uh, there's, a lot you, of, we, there's a lot of ringing hands and sighing. Like, when I, yeah, when I, exactly. When I, when I talk about. So, but now the, those ringing hands, it feels like are now closing around the throats, right? Of, of the telcos, because uh, our Minister of Finance, uh, Tengku Zafrol, was in Singapore and uh, was quoted, oh no, so not was in Singapore, but uh, he was quoted by Singapore Straits Times to say that, look, the deadline will not be extended, right? Reaffirming what the minister said, but also <coughs> that the government will now consider other operators, right? Or other parties yeah. to issue license to for 5G. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, man. Uh, this is, you know, a very serious, you know, uh, escalation, right? I would say, of of uh, of uh, pressure, right? Because you, I, I have, and you, you, Zoff was telling me before camera, uh, before you got on camera, that I was very optimistic, and uh, I, I am because I think the telcos will have seen the writing on the wall. They tried their best, and you know, if they got to go this way, go this way. If they claim, if their claims are actually somehow true, that it's going to be more expensive, you're just going to pass the cost on to the consumer. And by the way, that cost will still be lower than what we're paying, you know, per gig for, for 4G. So it's still a win for them. But I understand that they are, you know, look, they are listed companies and they have shareholders. And I thought uh, Tunku Zafrol's uh, comment that, you know, the government will not be, uh, you know, the, uh, we will, uh, we cannot be, uh, he's, uh, I'm trying to look for the exact phrase. He said that the interest of, of the country and its people must take precedence over the telco's narrow commercial interest. Now, uh, you know, as somebody who's a corporate guy himself, I, I, I don't know whether it's misquoted there or what, but you know, that's definitely an uh, extremely unfair statement to make because the telcos mm -hmm. uh, go into business because they see a commercial opportunity. No telcos you know, go into the business of, of, of providing connectivity to the market because they say, hey, you know, I want to help, you know, the, the, the bottom 20%, right, get as much, you know, uh, uh, services as the top uh, 50% and at the rate that's con con uh, commensurate. No, it doesn't happen. It has to be a for-profit viable business. And if they are pushing it this way, then they're pushing it this way, right? You cannot uh, fault them for trying to do the very best for their shareholders. But when you've come up against your, your best efforts have come to this now and the government is not, you know, uh, uh, changing its stance, and it, it, it did consider their opinions, right? It looked at all parties, look at all the data points, it still came to say SWN is the way to go. We don't want more money going out of the country, just share one network and you can compete on branding and on services. And totally, I agree that can be done. So let's just move ahead with this, and I hope it doesn't come to that, that they're going to open it up after the end of this month, literally two weeks away, right? And say we look yeah. at other players. It's going to be very hard for other players to come in and 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 compete with these guys. But I tell you yeah, what, I mean, this yeah. is a golden opportunity, sorry, for, for, for Unify, because I know they're going to come on board and a golden opportunity for yes or so, right, uh, to, uh, mm -hmm. to do it. And oh, by the way, I fully expect Cellcom now to also, you know, uh, uh, play ball because, you know, market talk is that the, the, the Agiata Group CEO, Dato Azidin, Izadin, right, sorry, uh, lost yeah. his job because of this very matter, because Cellcom was not, you know, uh, uh, putting its hat in the ring on the side of the government's corner. So, you know, and EPF now also, right, uh, has sold, according to the H, right, they've sold sh uh, st shares in, in the big three players, DG, Axiata, and Maxis. So there's, mm -hmm. uh, you can clearly tell that the government is united and wants this to happen. And they clearly realize that this benefit the country and its citizens and its businesses. So, you know, telco operators, I, I really think you're going to just, get on with it and, you know, do the very best this can. This is not a catastrophic, you know, situ scenario for you, which then would be uh, my stance would change, right? 
it is mm-hmm. not even uh, uh, damaging. So I, I think they just need to go ahead with this. Uh, Zof, you're not, and sorry, you were going to say something. Yeah, I mean, one, one is, of course, that to, to just appoint a new player to come in. I mean, it's not... It's not easy to get a oh, license. Presser. It's not meant oh. to be easy to get a license. Yeah. Uh, if you appoint a new player and you shortcut a license, there'll be a lot of noise from all parties concerned, I think. There'll, there'll yeah. be a lot yeah. of complaints. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and then there's also the question mark, can, can they deliver, right? I mean, if you if you appoint some new new party. So yeah. I, I would agree that having to appoint a new party is definitely really low on the list yeah. of where you want yeah. you want to be. Uh, the other thing which I wanted to highlight, of course, was the fact that while this was going on, the other news that ran in parallel was that the uh, Ministry of Telecommunications uh, had directed MCMC to do this mapping of yeah, yeah, the levels yeah. of internet speed around the country, followed by saying that they will take regulatory action against ISP. So we're not even talking 5G, right? We're talking no. about no, no. Yeah. the... So, it's, just, so it's almost yeah. like to say, you want to talk about giving the five best 5G experience you know, the government is as if saying, let's, if you can't even do the 4G properly, what, what, and, and I think that has been one of the points, at least Ralph Marshall has made that, uh, that the rollout of 4G was not as equitable, equitable. or, or uh, yeah, as it, it should have been, right? Yep, so, there you go. so, so that's where we are on that. Yeah, no, sorry, <laughs> by, 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 by the way, the minister did say that his confidence, the telcos, he said high confidence that the telcos can get this right. And he said, let's just yes, all you know move true. forward and, and think about national interest. And also, by the way, interesting, he, he, he urged his ministry to focus on all the other initiatives also, right? The, you got to remember the ministry is not just the telecommunication industry. They also focus on, they got five priority areas, which another one is digital economy, which is the, the raison d'entree of us having this show and having this conversation. Mm. Also the creative economy and uh, uh, government communications, right? And cybersecurity, which is now dovetail nicely into the next area you're going to talk about, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, cybersecurity. Cybersecurity has been important for the last, I God knows how many years. Every, every time I could have written the same article oh, about yeah. cybersecurity and the article would have been some, gone something like cybersecurity is very important. It's so prevalent that it's not a question of if it happens or when, but when a breach happens. Huh? Uh, and then um, the the third part would be like everyone is trying to do their best, but uh, it feels like at the end of the day, the end user is at the losing end. And and this is yeah. going to be the, the case even for this next story because, um, well, I mean, there's a company called Storehub, and yeah. Storehub does uh, POS uh, systems, right? For, Point of sale. for yeah, shops. it's a promising yeah. startup. Yep. Yes. And what happened was that is the story broke that they had have had 1.7 billion records of a million people. The, the data has been out there. And, um, and this includes data such as their names, their phone numbers, their, their email addresses, their physical addresses and things like that. Yep. Yep. Now, Storehub were quite quick to step up yes. and say, hey, hang on. The, it doesn't include things like your financial data. Mm. Uh, and I assume financial data means things like credit card information, yeah. which is what yep. people really worry about. Mm. But just as an example of how serious this uh, private information leaking is, just in the last few days, there's been this scam going around WhatsApp. The police allegedly send you this letter saying you're a suspect in a drug case inquiry. Um, and they, they have this PDF of a letter, which looks very official, which looks really nice. And then right up there is your name and your IC number, you know, and I think your address is there as well. So, you know, it, it, this is how this personal data is used. It's used to sometimes yeah, to try to convince you that something is, is legitimate, right? Yes. yes so yes, yes. Uh, for the last few weeks, Karam and I, we've been saying, what's the government doing I about know. this? What are they saying about this? Have they yeah. finally said and done something, do you think? I, I, because... I don't think so. La. This is one example, I think. But, but, you know, we've been talking about previous examples where ministries, right, have had, uh, apparently their data has been, uh, has been uh, you know, uh, uh, their servers have been penetrated, their data has been retrieved, and they don't say anything. It's not us, it's not us. So I know we've got statements from the National Security Council here saying, right, uh, and MCMC saying, hey, we, we all got to buck up and do something. Mm-hmm. This should have started way before. When you keep letting people letting things slide, this is what you get. 
And we have spoken about this also, right? That uh, just the quality of, of staff in some of these agencies and ministries, especially right, in, the, in the technology units, I just thought good enough, there's not, not enough of that sense of purpose and a, a sense of, uh, not sense of purpose, but that, that, that fear factor that they're going to be held accountable if something like this happens. And you look at Storehub, right? How fast they replied. They apparently were first told in February of this year, right? By mm. Amazon Web Services. They say they fixed it, but there's still an issue. 1.7, uh, 1. what is it? 1.7 billion, right? Data points is huge. 1.7 billion records. It's, yeah. it's, it's not just them, right? It's their, uh, but it's their, I think it's their, they mentioned a few thousand of their merchants and then the customers yes. of those merchants. That's where the, the long tail of this is, right? The customer of those merchants, their information, which means that then potentially you and yours and my information could be also part of this 1.7 billion. And hey, we are talking so coolly about this. Uh, we should be upset, banging table. Hey, I said this. I said no. I said this before. I'll say this again. If somebody sneaks into your house, takes out your IC from your wallet, and copies all that information down, and then leaves your house, right? Uh, I, you would be really upset. You'd be like, why is someone breaking into my house and doing this, right? Exactly. Yeah. We should exactly. be at, at least this level of upsetness. I yeah, feel, yeah, right? yeah. True, true. But anyway, the, that is that. Then we'll see how this plays out. But any kudos to Storehub for coming out immediately and responding and doing something about this. And by the way, I was uh, while you were talking, I was there. This is the, the picture of the Storehub founder oh, who is, yeah, uh, you know, oh, who is one of uh, a DNA. Little blue screen there. Yeah, who is one of DNA's Digirati 50. La. So, yeah. you know, uh, so, you know, we've got him, you know, uh, on, under the radar. Okay, not under, on the radar. Okay, so anyway, next story. Uh, MTDC uh, and, and uh, SDEC, which is Sarawak Digi Digi Digital Economy Corporation, in Sarawak are now launching a prototype, I love this, right? A prototype lab partnering with, uh, you know, they're both partnering each other to boost adoption of 4IR, right, in the state. So, and it's going to have, and apparently the state now, because of this, is going to get its first ever 4IR facility. And you've got MTDC has got some partners who are familiar with 4IR who are going to be part of this to help the businesses that come and say, hey, you know, 4IR, we've heard about this. Since our state government is so serious and now setting up this lab, can we understand more how can it help our business? Because they will only come forward if they believe that adoption of 4IR will help their business. And I, I really like this collaboration. And it's important enough that even the chairman of MTDC, right, Tan Sri Abdul Rahman Mamad, who was formerly the... the the director general of uh, of, of METI, right? Uh, uh, he was the uh, uh, you know who, who was uh, uh, who came out and, and gave a statement and said, hey, you know, this is an important program, flagship program. We're going to make sure we execute this well, so that then obviously you can roll this out in other states also. Correct, Zoff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I have to say I have to comment. Sarawak, in terms of ambition, in terms of what they have on paper, actually, they. And, and this is when I went and I, I talked to uh, actually the CEO uh, of SDEC okay. and, uh, and, and he, he said like, you know, we have, we cannot be reliant on, on federal government to just give us stuff, right? We, we yeah. also have to do our own thing, which I thought was very good. And there's, I mean, there's, they have a plan, they have pillars and everything. But personally, Kara, personally, I feel the rollout adoption is not as fast as it should be of course I yeah mean, because my, look my you, you 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 because Zof, you can you can uh, you can provide the facilities and the support but then you cannot force the horse to come to the uh what water water container what do you call it who who is your horse a trough who who is your <laughs> the horse you're talking about the <laughs> horse are the smes out there these are the startups oh, out okay. there because these are the companies out there that will benefit from this so the business yeah. associations, right? I think in Sarawak, business associations play an interesting role, very influential. Mm. They need to be on board. I, I actually wish that this uh, uh, this signing ceremony had the, the the state FMM chapter and you know some business association uh, groups also be part of this. I think that would have been even much better. So, but mm. anyway, yeah. it is what it is. Uh, you know, so maybe now we move on to the last story. Yep, so yeah, it's just a very quick story. Okay. So touch and go, right. touch and go announced that they're now allowing cross-border payments. So you can take your touch and go wallet, travel to Singapore, and then use it in Singapore, albeit in this very narrow and very restrictive 
case lah. So right. so specifically, that's the largest wait, 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 cap wait, companies wait, in let, Singapore. Wait, 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 let me just explain, right? Let, let, let take me that back. If you happen to take a taxi in Singapore that is with the Comfort Delgro company, then you may use your Touch and Go wallet to pay for the taxi ride. Yes. So, um, I mean, uh, I, I think, by the way, uh, last year, uh, Bank Negara and Singapore Monetary Association, Singapore said that by the end of this year, right? They'll, yes. You do it now. Do it now. And their version of uh, uh, do it now, which is called pay now, will be interoperative, right? <laughs> interoperable. Yep. Awesome. Is, is that the right phrase? Yes. So, so um, I'm, I'm, am I excited about the possibility that I can just whip out my phone and pay something through my Maybank to you type app? Maybe, I, I don't know. But, but certainly, uh, sort of like making it easy for these cross-border financial transactions to take place, I think it's a very, very important thing. Uh, Puzzle to yeah. if you want to talk and, about and, the, and Del Grido uh, 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 Del Gro Del Gro Del Gro Comfort Del Gro is actually you know they're the largest. Uh, I'm surprised. I was going to say fifteen thousand caps are uh, they actually down to nine thousand man. I remember that they were like around at least twelve thousand before. Like this was like twenty nineteen, so they've mm. come uh, come down dramatically. And I think because. Uh, uh, there are a lot more individuals, right, in the gig economy. Yeah, uh, you've got your Grab and you've got even uh, Go, uh, Gojek also is there, right? They're offering, you know, vehicles. Yes, Gojek is so, yeah. very competitive. So wow, that that shows uh, how digital, right, is disrupting a uh, mainstream economy businesses. But you know, uh, Comfort Delgro is not complaining, right? They're just moving on and doing the best they can to adopt and to compete. So that's what's yes. happening there. And I, I think this is good, you know, and I know that after this move, there'll be more Singapore companies wanting to partner with uh, Touch and Go also, and I look forward to that for sure. Uh, but anyway, this is this week's, this found uh, this feel like it's a short show, but that's fine. Yeah, we always want to try to keep it to like around 15 minutes. Any closing remarks, Soph, before we end the show? I know that's uh, just take care, and, and I think we're going to get more news this week as we as always, we end, yeah, and uh, run up to the June deadline. <laughs> And to show our, you know, our, uh, you know, digital economy is moving ahead in Malaysia. All right, see you all. Bye bye.